Hello, it's time for another anatomy lesson. Are you as excited as I am? Today's topic is tissues, not Kleenex, not puffs, body tissues. Let's go. All right, what is histology? Histology is the study of tissues. An okay, important thing to realize is histology is based on the microscopic level, so it's not what you can see with the naked eye. We're going to have to look closer. It's not gross anatomy. It's not the macroscopic level. We're talking microscopic here. Some super fun facts, because I just like them. The human body has over 30 trillion cells, and depending on what site you look at, that number is going to vary, but that's a rough estimate. And about a million cells die every second. So again, we talked about mitosis before. You can see why it's super important. All right, this is a lot, so let's break it down. Here's body organization. So we're going to go through the flow of organization, and then we're going to focus on tissues. So first, we have cells. Cells are the smallest um, unit of life, the smallest thing that is alive. Cells are made of organelles, but the organelles themselves are not alive. Cells do their cell job. So like brain cells do what they're supposed to do, liver cells, skin cells, they do their job. But then they also secrete and regulate the extracellular matrix, the stuff outside of them. Groups of cells together that then function in a similar way make up tissues. Four types of tissues, which we're going to talk about next. Then tissues, they're groups of tissues that um, function together, make organs. Organs like the brain, the heart, the liver, the small intestines, the thyroid gland. Okay. Groups of organs that then function together would be an organ system, like your nervous system, digestive system, cardiovascular system, etc. And then groups of organ systems, the 11 that make up the human body, make up an organism, a human being in this course. Okay. Now let's break the tissue group down further. We're gonna learn about four tissue groups today. Epithelial, connective, muscular, and nervous. Okay. So epithelial um, covers all the surfaces and it protects, secretes, absorbs, and filters. Oh, it does a lot more, but that's just a narrow list. Connective, okay, support and structure is a very simplified list. Connective tissue is like, whoa, it does so much. And muscular focuses on movement, and nervous tissue focuses on communication and control. All right, now we're going to break down each of those tissue types further and get really into the material. Connective tissue first. Connective tissue is wild. It is so varied. It is so diverse. It is the most abundant tissue in your body and has the widest range of functions. It consists of cells with varied amounts of matrix. Okay, connective tissue is everything from bone and blood to tendons to fat. Okay, huge range. And we're going to break down each into its major category. Loose connective tissue. Loose connective tissue is just like it sounds, loose right? Like fat tissue, adipose tissue. It has more stuff outside, more ground substance, and less of the fibers. So you can see in the picture, there are some fibers, but they're not really tightly pushed together. They're loosely organized. This gives this tissue some flexibility and some movement. Complete opposite to dense connective tissue. Look at this picture. You can see, look at all those collagen fibers, tightly, tightly, tightly packed together. Why? It gives it some durability, some strength. There's a lot more fibers and less of the ground substance. And this makes up things like ligaments and tendons, which we need the strength for. We need the bone held tightly to bone, and we need the muscle held tightly to the bone. Okay? So dense connective tissue, fibers packed in real tight, gives it durability. Supporting connective tissue is cartilage and bone. Cartilage, like it's in your nose and your ears, but also at the ends of your bones and your joints. Okay? And cartilage serves as shock absorption so that when you jump, uh, it gives you some protection from bone smashing into bone. So it gives some protection and shock absorption. Bone, on the other hand, is uh, for more durable. It's calcified. It's for weight support. It's also what our muscles attached to so that we can actually move our skeleton. This right here is bone, and you could see it looks sort of like a tree ring-like structure. So that's how you can tell when um, an image that you would be looking at is actually bone. Okay. Uh, fun fact again, infants are born with a mostly cartilaginous skeleton, and it gets ossified or calcified as they grow. Fluid connective tissue 
is like blood and lymph, okay? Sorry, fluid connective tissue like blood and lymph, all right? They're very similar in what they contain um, as far as the liquid piece of it. Blood has formed elements like red blood cells, which carry oxygen, white blood cells, part of our immune system, and platelets for clotting. It also contains plasma or the matrix. Now that plasma or matrix part is very similar to lymph. Lymph is part of your immune system. It comes from your body tissues and circulates throughout your body. You have lymph nodes in various parts of your body where that lymph moves through and helps to fight infection. Now, muscular. So now we're into muscular tissue, three types of muscular tissue. First one is the one I think that most people think of when they think of muscular tissue. It's skeletal muscle. It's our muscular system. It's a voluntary muscle. It's striated. Striated means you see these stripes. Those are the striations. Okay? Skeletal muscle is attached to bones. It moves and stabilizes our skeleton, helps with our posture. It guards the entrances and exits to our body so we can close our mouth. Also would be um, things like the anus, okay, and the urethra opening, okay, it guards those entrances and exits. It generates heat, like when you shiver or when you're exercising and all of a sudden you're getting warmer. And it serves to protect your organs. It's another layer um, below your skin that gives some protection for your organs. Now, smooth muscle tissue is involuntary. That means I don't have control over it. It is not striated. I don't have volunteer. I can't choose to do it, okay? Um, and I'm not going to see any striations here. And smooth muscle moves food and urine and your reproductive secretions throughout your body. So it moves food through your digestive system, urine through your excretory system, reproductive secretions out of your body. It also controls the size of your respiratory passages and blood vessels. So if it's cold, if I'm cold and my blood vessels need to get constricted to conserve heat, um, my smooth muscles are responsible for that. And our last muscle category is cardiac. Cardiac is also involuntary, and thank goodness people don't have to think about, oh, time for my heart to beat, oh, again, oh, again, otherwise people would forget. Cardiac muscle is also striated, but you can tell the striations are often not as clear as in skeletal muscle, but this right here, these, these are the super important feature that tells you when it's cardiac muscle. Those are intercalated discs, and they allow cardiac um, cells to communicate quickly and efficiently with each other to help your heart beat. So cardiac muscle found only in the heart. It moves your blood and it helps to maintain your blood pressure. You don't want it too high and you don't want it too low. And cardiac muscle helps to do that. Now let's move on to nervous tissue. Two main types of cells in the nervous um, tissue, neurons and glial cells. Now there's a whole slew of glial cells, but we're not going to cover them individually. Neurons are nerve cells. They're like the stars of the nervous system. And the one that most people think of, they look like this with dendrites and a long axon connecting it to another neuron. Here's the cell body with the nucleus, okay? That's a neuron, a nerve cell. And that's what most people think of when they think of the nervous system. However, glial cells or the neuroglial cells are supporters of those neurons, much more numerous than the neurons. And they really support and um, help the neurons do their job effectively. So they do things like produce myelin for myelinated nerve cells. They support and protect neurons. They're part of the immune response. They provide nutrition. So really, neurons could not do their job effectively if it were not for all the glial cells. All right, and our last category is epithelial. Epithelial covers all the external surfaces of your body, skin, but it also lines all the internal body surfaces. And epithelial tissue is named according to the shape and the number of layers. So we're going to look at a chart, and I think I'm going to have to take my picture away, so uh, trust me, I'm still here with you. But we're going to talk about the shape and the number of layers for epithelial tissue. Okay, so here we go. See, I don't want to block any of this for you, so I'm going to take away this so that I can show the picture clearly. So again, number of layers and shape. So we have number of layers across the top and shape across the left side. So for number of layers, we have simple. Simple means one single layer. And we have multiple layers, it's called stratified. And there's one 
um, exception and that's pseudo stratified. It means it looks like it's more than one layer, but it's really not. If you look at the image, you can see how the nuclei don't exactly line up. So they give the illusion of it being more than one layer when it's really not. Now let's look at shape. So we go the first one, squamous. Squamous are sort of flat, irregular shape with a flat, irregular looking nucleus. Cuboidal are cubes, square shapes with a nucleus roughly in the center. Notice when it gets stratified, that shape may get distorted a little bit, but still far more cuboidal than stratified. And then we have columnar, long, thin rectangles look like columns. Often they are ciliated, which you can see at the top, and they can be simple or stratified. Okay. Now, when we name a type of epithelial tissue, we're going to say the number of layers and then the shape. So simple squamous, simple cuboidal, stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal, we're gonna name the number of layers and then the shape, okay? So, and this, there is one additional one which is transitional and that's for where we need more flexibility um, and movement, um, but this is what we're gonna focus on here. All right, and then the last part of um, tissues that we're gonna focus on with epithelial tissue is membranes. And there are four main categories of membranes. First, we have mucus. Mucus lines the cavities that open to the outside of the body. So that mucus provides an extra layer of protection. So you would find that, that in the digestive tract, the respiratory tract, the urinary tract, the reproductive tract, anything where there's an outside opening to the body. So those mucus secretions provide an extra layer of protection. Then we have serous membranes and serous membranes line the cavities that actually don't open to the outside of the body. So that is like the thoracic cavity um, surrounding the lungs, surrounding the heart, okay? So it closed the outside of the body, um, but still another layer of protection. And then we have the cutaneous membrane, which is just skin. It covers your body surface. And then we have synovial membranes. And synovial membranes deal with our joints. Okay, so they line our joint cavities and actually produce that fluid within the joint. So if we didn't have the synovial membrane, we wouldn't have the fluid within the joint, and then we would have more pain and limited movement in our joints. And there you have it, it's tissues, okay? Cells grouping together, making tissues, four types, connective, muscular, epithelial, nervous, okay? Lots of great information, lots of content, Super exciting.